Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial in the GoTo Shell series. In this series we'll discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for shell scripting in five minutes or fewer. Before we begin, first, due to its ubiquity and my experience with it, we're going to use Bash, specifically version 4 and higher. Secondly, I'm not perfect, so if you do spot any errors or mistakes on my part, let me know in the comments or by email and I'll try to get that corrected in the video. Welcome everyone. Today's video is going to be about arrays and how to use them in Bash or Shell in general. Uh, this is a very popular topic. Lots of questions about it. People at work ask me about it all the time. It's really not too complicated, but like any language, it's going to have its little caveats. So we will try to discuss them. This is going to be the basics video. There will be an advanced video that comes after it. Uh, we'll just try to cover some fundamentals today. Arrays are one of the two types of data structures, with the other one being associative arrays that shell scripts provide, or at least bash provides. Uh, Associative arrays are going to be covered in a separate video, although in fairness, the way Bash treats arrays and associative arrays is almost identical. So we'll discuss more of that in the advanced video maybe. One special note before we get started is that we will be talking about something called the internal field separator, which is the IFS variable. It is not important that you know everything about it. We'll cover it in another video, but I will be showing it today, so don't be surprised by it, and don't worry if you don't quite understand what it is exactly toward the end. All right, let's switch over here to the training VM. On here, you'll see that we have a few different files. Uh, six, uh, one through three is what we will be covering today. Four through six will go through the advanced video uh, coming up later. All of these will be made available in, there will be a link in the description of the video, uh, this one in the advance, so don't worry about it. The, the intention here is not to hammer it in, it's to go quickly like all our videos and give you the resources later to follow up. You will notice all of these um, scripts will have comments in them that will explain not only what was what's being done, but what is it that Bash is expanding things out to or interpreting things as to help you understand. All right, let's get my timer started and we will get going on this. There we go. So the first thing we're going to discuss is how to create arrays. The basic syntax is you name your variable and use an equal sign and use parentheses to separate all the items that you want to have in your array. So we have item one, item two, item three, and item four. You'll notice they're separated by spaces rather than by commas like other languages. Um, they're actually separated by anything in the IFS variable, which is only half true because I'm using bash 4.3 as you can see, and when I change my IFS, I don't actually get different word splitting in here, which is what IFS controls, so I, I don't think you should rely on that. Another thing to note is that since my elements contain a space between the number and the letter or the word here, uh, I have to quote them. Otherwise, Bash, when it creates the array, would see this as item, this is an item, this is an item, this as an item, and so on and so forth. Another way to create arrays is to use the same syntax but specify the subscripts. So rather than automatically getting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth, you can specify them yourself. You can also forego the parenthesis. Um, syntax entirely and just reference your subscripts automatically. You don't even have to go in order if you don't want, which is kind of weird. Uh, another thing is that since you can use spaces or tabs or new lines and bash will automatically merge multiples of them, you can make them pretty like this, which is helpful sometimes. Uh, you also don't have to make them pretty. You can make them quite ugly and it will still work the same. If you're using like command substitution or something like that, you may end up with an ugly line that you want to feed into an array and this works. If your shell supports the declare keyword, that's fine, but you don't have to use it. I'll go ahead and run this just to show you that it does work as advertised. The next thing we'll talk about is how to access array elements. So in this one, I'm going to create my array and I'm going to give it three elements. This will be element zero, one, and two because it's a zero based index in shell. Uh, if you want to print a single element, you just use the variable notation with braces, they're required, and then you use the subscript surrounded by brackets. Uh, in this case, we want zero, so we will get item one. You'll notice all these echoes off to the side. This is what Bash will interpret after expansion has been done. You can use a star to get all the items, but be aware it will put all the items together in one token, okay? So that, that matters later. There's the at symbol you can use, which also spits out all the items, but it spits them out as separate 
arguments or separate parameters, if you will, to the program you're calling. This is important and I highly recommend you just use this syntax all the time. You can use negative indexes. You can use a positive index with an offset. So say grab index one, which is item two, sorry, item two, and then go a length of two items. So it'll get both of those. You can also use a negative, um, not negative length, but if you use a negative here, it's a substring or it is a negative index defined from the back of the array. That does work. Uh, if you do this, you're saying, give me all the items, but instead of listing them, give me the count of them. So there are three. This says, give me all the items, but give me their subscript values rather than their actual values, which in this case is zero, one, and two. And if you have programmatically found an index that you want to get, you can simply use that variable inside your braces and it works. The last thing to talk about is how to add and remove items. The, we have an array here with three items. If you want to add an item, use the plus equal syntax to add item four. You can also use that subscript notation I talked about. You'll notice I did not add items 95 to 98 and bash is okay with that, which is insane. Um, this is just showing that it works. If you want to remove an item, just call the unset command, the name of your array without the dollar sign and the subscript you want to remove. Uh, if you want to add another item, after you've already removed an item, please note that it will not take that item spot. It will always be appended to the end. If you want to delete the entire array, just call unset on the array itself. Don't put anything after the end of it and it'll remove the entire array. Let me scroll down a little. All right, I'm going to unset the array again just to make sure it's clear for this example. I want to add an item to the front of the array. Right now I put red and blue in. If I want to add white, I just redeclare the whole array. I put white at the front and then I use this double quoted, you know, give me everything syntax, which is evaluated first and put afterwards. So this is the actual declaration that shell or bash ends up seeing. All right, I'll unset the array again for this next example and I'll put red, blue, and green in. And I know that programmatically I want at index one to insert white. So index one is blue, remember zero based index. And this syntax here is very similar to this. It's just a more complicated version. So give me everything in the array starting at index zero, which is red up to one, which is going to be just red, a length of one, put white in between it and then grab the rest of it with that index offset. Um, that's pretty much it guys, uh, the arrays. I know I blew through that pretty fast. Uh, I want to let you know all these scripts, all six of these, uh, these are the beginning ones, these will be the advanced ones, will be available. There will be a link in the description section that will show you where to download it. Um, there will be an advanced video. In fact, I've already got it recorded. I just need to get it uploaded. So with that, thank you all very much. My intention here is not to cover everything you could do with arrays. It's to give you a very whirlwind introduction to arrays and you guys can throw in some more comments. If we need to do a mop-up video, we can, but I think you get the gist of how to work with them. Uh, thanks again for watching. Thumbs up if this video was helpful and you liked it. Uh, subscribe because that's what helps me get word of mouth out as this is a free service and I don't you know, pay for advertising. And uh, if you have comments, that really helps stir the, stir the education, if you will. Get the noobs out there some info and maybe even teach some of the advanced guys a thing or two. All right, guys. Have a great day.